Okay, welcome back. Um, we've been focusing on the spiritual nurturance of uh, one of the elements needed in a <coughs> Christian marriage and family. And uh, the last hour, we looked at the role of uh, the church, the um, uh, how, wh why would it be necessary for a family to be part of a local church, growing children in nurturing them, in serving, nurturing them in in missions, in tithing, and also uh, just being focused uh, with the kingdom of God. Right now, we are looking at another aspect of uh, of spiritual nurturance, which is the family altar and intercession. Okay, so we did uh, talk about the significance of maintaining a family altar. Uh, there are certain suggestions that uh, we can look at when we are having a family altar. Uh, specifically, what does it mean? A family altar is just a, a place where you come together, uh, where you spend time one with one another in in with God. Right? It's just taking time to worship, to pray, to speak God's word, to manifest the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, the how can it be done? It is. It's something that can be that can be created by every family. It could be at any time of the day, <clears throat> and keeping it as regularly as possible, um, so that it, everyone comes together, um, and also making it meaningful and uh, in, in a way that can can make it connected, connecting to even children of the depending on the age group of the children. Right, if you're having smaller children, to make it uh, a time where they're also engaged, maybe with singing, with worshiping, with doing something that helps to really build uh, the knowledge of God. Right, it doesn't have to be very ritualistic, but it can be a time of uh, open uh, learning and open sharing, hearing from God's word. So it it can be constructed in any way. Uh, that uh, that a family decides, right? It can be just using scripture. It can be using a devotional. It could be uh, uh, listening to some message together, or a or a uh, listening to a devotional. Whatever is useful for the family, right? And as uh, as the family grows, as children also grow, making it more interactive, where there is time for discussion, where there's time for conversation. Uh, looking at answering questions that may be there in God's word. So just ensuring that everybody participates in um, contributing to that family altar and also making sure that you're praying, praying for one another, praying for uh, each other. Okay. Uh, so even, even when a family member may not have a personal commitment to Jesus, it's good to ask them to join in prayer, keeping it, uh, you know, keeping it as loving and as welcome as possible, right? One important part of family, uh, of spiritual nurturance is interceding for one another, which is to pray for one another, okay? Uh, when we look at uh, uh, the way, uh, you know, the life of Jesus, we see how Jesus prayed for others. And one of that is, recorded here in Luke 22, 31 to 32. Uh, it reads, And the Lord said, <clears throat> Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Okay. So uh, one of the important things we do is to intercede for one another, pray on behalf of our family members. Okay. Um, now, what does this do? What does plan? What does a, a praying or interceding for others do? Okay. We we understand and know that God has a purpose and a plan for each one of us, so we can stand alongside with God, hold on to that to those promises, and pray that the purpose of God is fulfilled in the lives of others okay um there so that that's one that that we call out or we call forth 
the plan and the purpose, the destiny of God in the lives of the people we're praying for. Also, there may be different um, situations people may be going through, some difficult circumstances or difficult situations. And they may uh, really, uh, they may really require uh, wisdom or direction or a certain way of dealing with that at, at that point of time. So you pray over that, that they have the strength, they have the wisdom that uh, God would work with, work with them and establish them in the faith to go through whatever challenges um, uh, they may have. Okay. We also pray that they may be faithful, that uh, they, they continue the walk of faith. There are times when their faith may be weak, that we continue to pray that it will be restored and they will return uh, to walk with God, to be committed to, um, to journey with God despite the kind of circumstances that they may be going through. We can also pray that the power of uh, uh, the darkness, the power of darkness or the, uh, the, the way of the wiles of the evil one, you know, it doesn't hinder people, it doesn't discourage them, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't make them uh, discouraged, but uh, they would be able to put on God's armor and fight through those, through those instances where they, they, they may be tempted. We also pray for strength, we pray for protection, we pray for provision over people in our family, uh, that they will continue to walk according to God. So this, these are certain things that we could stand in the gap as we pray for, for our family. Now, if you notice in the next um, couple of pages, it's specific um, things that you can pray for, for, for your spouse, for your children, or for those um, that may not be in the Lord. Right, and it, so there are there are many scriptures that you can see in this, and we'll we'll probably go through all of it. We may not be able to take each uh, verse in detail, but maybe collectively we can look at this and uh, um, uh, uh, you know use this practically to pray for for the spouse or to pray for your children or to pray for other members in in the home. Okay. Uh, so I'm on page 172, and uh, we look at praying for the spouse. Okay, so there are there are different um, uh, areas that you can choose to intercede. So just taking some time to pray scripture over these members of of the home. So let's look at the first one. It's to pray for your spouse's spiritual growth, according to then there are certain scriptures that's given over there. So when you're praying. According to the scripture, you could pray that you know God would uh, uh, would give them a spirit of wisdom and revelation to have a knowledge of who God is. Uh, praying that uh, you know the eyes of their understanding will be opened, that they will see the hope that they have been called for. This is all as part of the scripture. Also pray that they will really know and experience the working of the mighty power of God. That they will be strengthened with power in their inner man by the spirit that that uh, the power of god that christ would dwell in their hearts through faith or they will they will really understand and comprehend what the love of god is over their lives they would they would you can pray that you know they will be filled with the fullness of god that they will be filled with the knowledge of who he is knowledge of his will um, in wisdom and all spiritual understanding uh, pray that they will walk worthy of uh, of of the, their calling, and they will walk in a way that fully pleases uh, pleases God. Pray that they will be fruitful in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God and and being strengthened in His power. So you know, when when you're actually praying Scripture, you're praying according to the will of God. You're praying according to what God desires that we that we pray for. So taking that, you know, just opening up the scripture and just 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 putting the names of these people in in that in itself 
is a way that you intercede. Okay, so you pray for their spiritual growth. You pray for the, the purposes of God in their lives, whatever purpose that God has called them to. You pray for that, praying that, uh, th that whatever gifting, whatever um, grace or anointing that God has uh, put into the lives of the people in your house, the members of your home, that they would fulfill that. They, they will walk according to what God has put into their lives. Okay? You could also declare what uh, God says over them. And in this uh, portion, it, uh, it really, it's, it's highlighting what uh, God's word says about a wife. Okay? But, but you could also bring about scripture that talks about what, do, what God desires in um, that of, in, in a husband. So I'm just reading out um, the point three, uh, declaring that your wife is a wise woman and she builds up your home that she's a prudent woman and she's your pride and joy, that she's a fruitful wine in your home, bringing blessing, joy, and protection. She's a virtuous woman and her price is far more than rubies. She's blessed in all that she does. Your heart trusts in her. Your children arise and call her blessed. She opens her mouth with wisdom and in her tongue is gentleness. Her own work bring her honor and respect in the city. So you're declaring what God has spoken about your spouse. Okay? You also pray that they will be blessed over whatever work they're doing, over the ministry that they're doing, um, that, that God would establish the work of their hands, that they would prosper in all that they do, in every decision that they make, that God would bring about wisdom. So these are some things, I mean, these are just certain pointers, certain suggestions. There are much many more things that you can pray for but it just helps to build certain uh, ideas, okay? And certain scripture is given for you to uh, uh, work through with. Uh, praying over children. There is a, a format that you can also pray for the children. The first one is similar to the one we spoke about with the spouse, uh, is praying for the spiritual growth. Um, uh, again, the same verses can be used where uh, you know you're praying that the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, that uh, the fullness of God uh, uh, is is that they will be filled with the fullness of God, they, their inner man's opened to the wisdom of God, to the power of God, that they will know the working of the mighty power of God. So you, you use the same scriptures to pray this even for the salvation of your children. Again, similar to the to the point above for the spouse, praying that, um, that the purpose that God has for each of their lives will be fulfilled and the giftings or the callings or the anointing that there is, they will fulfill and they will walk in each of that uh, as God has ordained. Okay. The next is to pray and declare the word of God over, a, over uh, other areas of their lives, whatever they may, they, they may be in, like maybe in their academics or in their work or in their um, uh, in the choices that they make the 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 career career paths that they choose the friends that they have the decisions that the everyday decisions that they make their health their safety uh, their spiritual growth their walk with the lord so just declaring the word of god um, over their lives okay uh, also praying that you that uh, they will fulfill the destiny with what God has placed in the, into their lives, uh, based on what is uh, God has for them. Okay. Also, you could pray that God would bless all their capacities, their capabilities, whatever skills they may have, uh, whatever things that God's put into their hearts, that they would use each of them for the glory of God and for the purposes of God. Okay. Pray for their future. Pray for their career and their profession. Praying for um, um, their marriages, the the people that they are going to marry, their families. Praying for um, for the for the way that they will their work uh, will impact very many others. Pray for opportunities to open up. Pray that they will continue to serve God and the ministry. 
and uh, we can also pray that uh, uh, pray and bind and and keep away and renounce every work of the enemy in the lives of our children or any schemes or attacks that satan has planned prepared for them we can break it as we continue to pray for them okay so praying for our spouse praying for our children um the next we or we could have uh, in our families there could be members in our families who uh, who do not believe in god and who are not yet saved right or they have not yet made a personal commitment to god and here are some scriptures that we can use to pray for that for uh, for them and uh, contend with god for their salvation so um, as we as we're doing this um, uh, you know we we continue to pray uh, uh, and as we do we're also allowing them the time that they need to come to make that decision it's not forcing them uh, and uh, taking over the 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 place of the holy spirit to to uh, uh, ensure that they come to salvation but it is for us to faithfully intercede for them express our love express uh, our our uh, concern over them okay and continue to to do this in the background which is to continue to praying engaging in prayer and and uh, ensuring that you you hold on to the promises of god over their lives okay and there are certain scriptures that's given over here so we'll just go through that quickly so one is to bind and cast down every spirit of deception every spirit of lies every spirit of false religion that could color their minds okay and uh, coming to the place to declare uh, what the gospel does for them that the gospel light of the gospel the word would shine in their hearts and uh, they would come to the knowledge of god and, and savior jesus christ you're also praying that uh, and and casting down every stronghold every imagination reasoning that may contradict any truth of god's word in their lives and uh, cast down thoughts that are uh, that are uh, that are disobedient cast down uh, thinking patterns that may not be in line with god so bringing it all under the captivity and submission of christ okay you can also pray that the holy spirit will bring about he is the convictor of sin of righteousness and judgment that the holy spirit will uh, convict them of sin and of righteousness and judgment um also praying that god would bring them uh, to him that they would draw near to god they would seek after him they would abide in him okay praying that god would bring them to a place of repentance and uh, that they would have the the knowledge of the truth and they will be able to escape the trap of the evil one uh, the sixth one is to ask the lord to grant them the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that their eyes may be opened their eyes may be enlightened to know the lord and to know what his word is and what the purpose of his calling calling is okay uh, alongside with this you can pray with them or, uh, with them using the other things that we did speak about praying for their uh, future their present um as well as uh, uh, you know whatever may be current in their lives okay uh, there are other promises that uh, that is that is brought about here that you can speak over your home uh, and there are scriptures that you can use to pray and declare over your home now there these are just some suggestions that has been put down but uh, you know you can add in as many as you want and um, you know just it's it's so um, beautiful as as we're thinking about our homes you know this is something that we could probably do right away and um, you know it it may be good that we remember the people of our homes and continue and and pray for them okay so rather than us just reading these verses i think that you know let's use the scripture and probably get practical and actually intercede we can't learn about intercession we have to intercede so rather than maybe reading out the scripture maybe i'll just take some time
take some time uh, to pray maybe the next portion where we are praying or declaring over our children i'll probably ask uh, somebody else to do i i think there're just a couple of people here who are parents nevertheless okay so let's pray together we have a have a time in class that we are going to pray together so i'm going to be um you know uh, just so that i don't miss out anything i'm just going to read out and pray uh, as it is so you could follow through you could just be in a time of um prayer or worship or you could just follow with me through the through the books okay so let's start uh, heavenly father we just thank you and we just um, pray over our homes we thank you that you have established our homes you have given us um uh the children you have given us um spouses you've given us uh, the elderly um thank you lord for establishing us in a home we are privileged that you have blessed us lord um and we just speak your word and, and we just pray that the voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tents of the righteous lord that um that uh, we will hear lord um, praise and worship and and the voice of salvation in our homes thank you that you have promised that lord lord your word says that um happy are those who obey the lord and who live by your commands lord thank you that um, uh, your you will provide for our needs uh, and you have promised that you that we as a result of your blessing will be happy and prosperous thank you god that us that our spouses or um you know, for those of us who are husbands our wives are like a fruitful vine in our homes and lord that our children will be like young olive trees around uh, our table thank you lord that uh, we who obey you will be blessed like this lord we just declare the blessing of the lord um uh, come upon us lord from zion that uh, lord we will see prosperity of the days of our lives lord that we will live to see our grandchildren lord thank you that your word says that you will bless the home of the just that you will bless the home of the righteous and our, and the righteous the home of the righteous is what will stand through every uh, storm through every affliction through every difficulty thank you lord that uh, our homes lord will flourish um lord that um there will be great wealth and there will be great treasure in the home of the righteous father we just declare what your word says about um our homes that we will dwell in peaceful habitations in secure dwellings and in quiet resting places thank you that that we can uh uh speak your word that is truth over our homes father we just pray that whatever we have prayed for and declared for about our homes will will come to pass as you have as you have spoken father lord we thank you we we give you praise in jesus name amen all right uh would would any of you like to um uh use the prayers that's there over children and pray and so there are many verses um, you know you can just you can just read them out just like i did just read them out and just just pray over uh over children so those of us who aren't married you can pray for for the children that will be birth to you, birth to you okay would somebody like to do that i'm on page 174 in the book and i think it's the same in the notes as well for page 172 okay page 172 would someone like to do that jackie would you like to pray yeah so sure. thank you lord for the gift of children lord they are from you lord you have blessed us with children lord father thank you for this blessing father father in psalm 37 25 and 26 we read i am old now i have lived a long time but i have never seen good people abandoned by the lord or their children begging for food father just like your word says lord we know lord 
that you will not leave our children. Your word says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, Lord. Father, that you will take care of our children, Lord, and all their spiritual longing and what they are called for. Father, we submit it at your feet. Father, we read in Psalm 112, 1 to 3, praise the Lord, happy is the person who honors the Lord, who takes pleasure in obeying his commands. The good man's children will be powerful in the land. His descendants will be blessed. His family will be wealthy and rich and he will be prosperous forever. Father, thank you, Lord, for this rich promises that you we have, Lord, as your children. Father, we pray this for our children, Lord, that they will be powerful in the land, Lord. And Father, all our descendants, generations to generation, will be blessed because of what you have declared, Lord, in your word, Lord. Because your word says, Lord, and you will do it for us, Father God. And you will take care of our children and all that they need, Father, to grow in you. And Father, have and fulfill their calling and move in their destiny and all that you have for them, Lord, because of your word. Father, we also read in Psalm 127, 1 to 5, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but shall speak with their enemies in the gate. Here am I and the children whom the Lord has given me. We are for signs and wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts. Who dwells in Mount Zion. Lord, thank you, Lord, for all the verses that you have declared, Lord, for our children. Lord, help us, Lord, to declare these verses every day, Lord, over our children and pray diligently for them, Lord. Father, this is the only protection that we have, Lord, for our children, Lord to be mighty warriors in your hand, Father. They are mighty warriors in your hand, Father God. Father, your words this, Father God, and you will do it, Lord, for your glory. Father, we read in Isaiah 1, 44, 3, and 4, for I will pour water on him who is thirsty and floods on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit on your descendants and my blessing on your offspring. They will spring up among the grass like willows by the water courses. Yes, Lord, your word says that you will pour out your Holy Spirit on our children and children's children. Lord, Father, we commit this promise for all of us, Lord, our children and the next generation, Lord, all who have gathered here, Lord. Father, we pray, Lord, those of us who have children and those of us who are, Lord, waiting for marriage and those who will have in the future. Father, you will bless them, Lord, and the children, Lord, will carry on the rich heritage what you have put in us lord and as we speak your word and by the power of the holy spirit they will be able to stand in this wicked generation lord as the light lord as the salt as whom you have called them to be lord not because of who we are but because of what you have told us and by your word we declare each and every promise that we have in the bible for our children lord in jesus mighty matchless name we pray Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jackie. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right. Yeah. So this is just, um, you know, one way that we can actually come before God, just intercede in different things. So whether it's praying for a spouse, praying for our children, praying for people who uh, who are lost, who, who don't have salvation, praying over our homes, praying over our elderly, uh, you know, we could just continue doing that using the word. Okay. All right. Um, any questions? Is there anything, any thoughts, um, any testimonies, you know, as you all may have uh, seen how much just coming together in prayer, interceding has really done, you know, many things for us. Um, and, and that's what we are really looking at, how important, what is the significance of family altar and intercession in our lives. So any testimonies?
Nothing. Yeah, something that I would like to share is when I was very small, so it will be like more like a tradition that they will read the verse and uh, you know long prayers will be said and uh, most of the time my sister she'll doze off by the time the family prayer ends by my mother prays and closes the prayer. So while I was thinking of family prayer in my house, I was thinking how to make my daughter join in. So mostly it was like based on her needs, like during an exam or like I, I told her, like, you just pray whatever is or whatever you need, you just present it to God. So to involve her was a challenge. But then sometimes it's like it's more like her involvement now. Now, now she's like, uh, no, the time is when we, we both are busy. It's like he calls us like, see. Uh, we have we have not prayed today so i think uh it all uh all the three members or like whoever is there in the family everyone it just if we involve each and every person rather than just you know the one person praying or uh, you know just taking the thing like all the three or something like they can read or they can share a thought or uh, how they went through a challenge uh sometimes my husband shares his uh, workplace situation so if we uh, give that initiative or uh, involve everyone, that helps rather than, you know, that, uh, you know, the, as I told in the, in my times where only my mom will pray long prayers. And uh, so that is uh, one thing that it helped us grow as a family. Yeah, that's true. Thank you. Thanks, Jackie. And I think that's an experience that probably most of us had. But yeah, to make it relevant even for young children or teens. So uh, just maybe some things that we used to do earlier was uh, we used to take a topic and each of us, uh, we're, you know, uh, a contemporary topic and listen to, uh, you know, short messages about it. Or there were times when we started a book, we would look at Bible Project and uh, watch that entire thing so that, you know, that is a introduction to the entire book and the children also are able to you know grasp it so those were some of the things that we did it was helpful and the children were a little younger we used to have role plays we used to debate about certain things you know we used to tell them okay suppose you meet someone who doesn't know jesus how would you talk to them and you know we just like have role plays and that itself you know were, were interesting experiences where they learned we learned uh and you know it it uh, encouraged uh, each, I think, each of us to know that that family altars can be uh, can be new ways of how we can connect with God uh, and make it more personal and more applied, rather than having you know very very strict uh, read prayer thing close. Uh, you know. So just doing some of these mixes, especially when there are children, can be very helpful. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, if not, I think we close. Um, we'll close for the day and uh, we'll meet back next week. Thank you all for joining in. And uh, we'll meet next week for a new, new, um, uh, entire new unit. Uh, we finished with elements. We'll be looking at uh, other, other chapters um, through the weeks following. Okay, thank you. God bless and meet you all next week. Thank you.